kid here with um, headphones on, wheelchair. Oh, there she is, the star of the show. Hello, could you see me? Could you hear me? Oh, Hi. Oh, hey. You're in your own world. Yeah. This is, I didn't even see you, you're so small. I drove past and yeah. I didn't see her. I was like, where the hell is she? There I'm you glad go. you found the place all right. Has, I didn't you were driving. I oh, know, my friend dropped me off. So basically yeah. this, um, how long has this been around? <laughs> this. Uh, as of right now, about a week. <laughs> Really? Yeah. You didn't do this by yourself, did you? No, um, so jazz. Um, jazz. Basically... Sounds like an Indian jazz. <laughs> no, it's, well, I don't know. But basically, um, Jasmine, myself, Adil mm -hmm. did the calligraphy. Adil is amazing, by the way. Adil. He's known everywhere for his calligraphy art. Okay. Um, and also Yasin helped paint the road over there. Yeah. Um, he actually did one of the uh, pieces, the written pieces there on Dorp Street where I am. Uh, you can go past and I'll show you. It's yeah, where the yeah. watermelons are. Uh -huh. All the watermelons. I was um, trying to find out the significance about the watermelons. Some South Africans don't know. Some say it's a sweet fruit and they just like it, but it's the colors, no, right? Um, the lady who um, uh, told you about it the other day, mm -hmm. she's correct. Basically, at one point, the, oh, yeah. um, the Palestinian flag was illegal and the watermelon basically was used to represent the Palestinians. Wow. As they, basically, that is their um, uh, alternate flag, so to yeah. speak. Um, so, yeah, to this day, the watermelon um, is still being used. Also, like, as, like, subtle, low-key, you know, supports. If yeah. say you're in an environment where wow. uh, you can't be outright showing your support, yeah, just show them. Just wear a watermelon or have watermelon. Just like that's amazing. You know? So yeah, I hate watermelons. Yeah, do you like them? I don't mind them. I, I don't like hate them, like... but I think there's better fruit like a mango or something. Well, to me, it's not like better mm. or worse. It's like. If I'm eating a watermelon, I'm eating a watermelon. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think of the of the fruit that I could be eating. It's like a watermelon's there. Voila. So yeah, um, I'm just so working on. So you was touching up on this side. Yes. So we're not finished yet. Um, mm. We kind of took a little breather. Where's the rest of the team? Um, Jazz is coming tomorrow. I just because I live right here, so I. Oh, you decided, do. Yeah. I live on Dorp Street, so it's the next. Oh road. man, is it really getting gentrified now? I um, heard so. It's not just now; it's in general. It's an ongoing process, but yeah. through the efforts of like the Boer Club Civic and Ratepayers Association, and the people as a civil society as a whole, we have been holding it at bay. However, um, the current leadership of Cape Town, uh, the Democratic Alliance, uh, through the city of Cape Town has been trying very hard to kind of allow certain projects to go through even if it's not in the best interest of our community but like i said we are a very active oh, wow. community so so the democratic party is no good here democratic alliance alliance yes the da um I don't south african good or bad, politics it's just let's just say a party is supposed to, especially if they're gonna, if they want win the vote to govern in the entire province, is supposed yeah. to represent all its people, not just a few. And if they had the majority vote, that means again the majority believes they can represent mm. our views and our whatever it is that we need or ask for. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, it's only now coming to light just how much they failed okay. us as a people. But, you know, to those who know, they know. And to those who are beginning to now know, <laughs> they now know. Wow. Yeah. It's a good thing you came in the shade, right? I mean, yes. at a time when it's 3 o'clock. They say leave the house at 3 o'clock in Cape Town. <laughs> I came, um, well, it's the, the, the shadow casts the side at about 12.30ish. But I came a bit late because uh, such a long email to send. Yeah, that even went on forever. You have no idea. <laughs> that even. I don't even. I don't even look forward to the response. I was like, look, I am finished. Thank you. Since a young, very young girl, have you always been passionate about fighting for things? Seems like you might have. Oh, it's not so much. Have fighting. you come from a family? Not even fighting, but just really 
you know, social issues and injustice and things like that has that always been interesting to you? You've always been like strong-minded to defend certain Let me put things. It this way. So I generally have like long curly hair, right? And one of my closest friends growing up was a young white girl with like wavy blondish hair. Yeah. And whenever I'd go visit my um, my dad, yeah, uh, we'd hang out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And basically, I would come back home and I would be telling my mom, look. Uh, I can't I can't brush my hair as easily as she can. I uh, can't um, swim as well as she can. And my mom would go out of her way to be like, yes, Kirsten, however, you've got things that um, also make you really great. Uh, like, you draw really beautifully. She yeah. encouraged my drawing. And when I was away, uh, living with her in the States for a while, mm-hmm. um, was her chance to kind of really drive home how all of who I am and, be, and love who, all of who I am. Yeah. Literally, she like strangers would come up to her and be like, "Oh, your daughter's got beautiful hair." So she would stop them and be like, "Stop, uh, mm. just hang on a moment." And she'd call me over and be like, "Kirsten, come. This lady has something to tell you." And then she, the lady would be like, "Oh, you've got beautiful hair." And I didn't realize how much that helped until now that I'm older. Literally, my mom would tell me the story, and I'd look at her and I'm like, "What? So, yeah. I ever doubted like how uh, wonderful and amazing I am, or?" ever disliked my hair something about you yeah. i was just so blown like blown away like how much effort my mom went um out of a way to kind of just not even out of a way just to make sure i knew my worth mm. so that to this day that story sounds like she made it up but yeah. she did it you know it's true so i wasn't always as confident but thanks to my mom i was and, and I became the person I am today. Yeah. And it gave me the opportunity to, when I see something um, that I feel isn't right, whether Speak the up. law says it's uh, it's right or wrong, she she told me I can trust in myself that- To make um, the right decision. Not just right, but like, because right is relative, right? Yeah. But to say something about it. And then through saying something, find out like, if there are people who agree with me, great. If there are people who don't, also great. The world is meant to have different opinions. I can't speak for someone um, whose experience is, say, male or masculine, because that isn't who I am. Yeah. So it's important for us to have these different perspectives and be willing to listen, mm-hmm. willing to hear each other, hopefully understand, and if not understand, meet each other halfway. Wow. You know? Yeah, because even my mom and I, we've had our differences, believe me. And it's through concerted effort on both sides that we've met each other halfway as mother and daughter, as a, a, say, a mature, more experienced woman and Mm -hmm. a younger uh, woman, you know, because I also recognize that my mom is a person too. Yeah. And I've always been admiration of who she is as a person and only as I'm older, getting older, beginning to appreciate her as a mother and how much she did she did for me yeah because before i was very much her daughter oh. <laughs> rebelling against her really fighting. yes and you said you had muslim family i know it's that a lot of south africans have mixed families yes religion wise there's some yeah. that is half muslim half christian yeah that's quite interesting yeah, like, and especially cape town like um i remember when i was younger um going to my aunt in Mitchell's Plain for Eid yeah. and then during Christmas them coming over to my uncle's place for Christmas and us just having dinner and it's just getting There's together. never confusion? No, nope, not even a little bit. Wow. I knew that was Eid and uh, Muslim knew, tradition. Yeah. I knew that Christmas was a Christian tradition and the only thing that bothered me is um, because my mom had shared custody obviously with my dad some Christmases I would be there by my dad uh, <laughs> I'm like oh I'm missing out you preferred your mom's Christmas it's not that I preferred it but you know like the FOMO when there's pictures and stuff yeah you know it's, it's not the same and because my stepmother's family like there's no shared sort of relation so I couldn't come over and be like hey see France my, that's my older brother yeah last. like ah oh, look what we did but yeah it's it was just it's just the appreciation, you know? Someone made a comment on one of the videos you posted saying South Africa needs to fix its own problems before they focus on Palestine. Yeah. That's quite a Remember comment. Remember I told you that people would say that? Because yeah. people are trying to be divisive. 
And as I said then, any, um, or maybe I didn't say it to you, but any job, any, um, anything, any success that we have, um, it doesn't really, how I say, uh, how, let me just describe it. Um, firstly, any, any success or job under oppression isn't a job worth having. Oh, and you, I remember any, you said that anything that we have here yeah we also need to be grateful for the help and support that we received from mm -hmm. countries like palestine and russia and cuba and china all those countries wow. that every other western yeah. country is in our face about like yeah. yo why are you buddies with these I guys know, right? they're full of this and that and i'm like dude you do understand that when we were down and like in the trenches these guys came to back for us, despite what those same guys mm. were telling us to, to, how I say, uh, lose these guys. Yeah, friends, don't believe them. Uh, were actually very much against us. It's actually, um, they called the ANC government, who eventually they took uh, um, power in yeah. the first elections. Um, they called them terrorists, just like Hamas. Yeah. And it's because of that, that when I hear people talking about the, the terror of Hamas, I just think to myself, Oh, right. Think of them like the ANC and then use it in that context and think for yourself. Are they truly terrorists? Because when I think of our government at the time of our democratic election, mm -hmm. they weren't terrorists. No. They were freedom fighters. fighters yep. So everything is in context. And it's, it's the context that we have lived our life, that we constantly have to try and re-look at the way that media is being presented to us. From when I was younger, my mom always told me to, to read everything with a pinch of salt. Yeah. Yeah? Um, to not just take it verbatim. And although it irritated the living daylight out of me, she always told me to do my research. She, if I asked her a question, she wouldn't write out, tell me. She'd be like, go find out. Go to the library, go find out, go Google. Wow. And it would irritate me so much so much <laughs> um especially because like say my cousins ask or something and then she'd be like la 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 and telling them the whole story and i'm like why did you tell them to do their research yeah <laughs> but because of that now i am equipped with like the, the like i don't know mindset that if i hear or see something go find out go find out what's the truth Mm. And if someone says something, take it with a pinch of salt and we'll see what happens. But you do have social media scholars, you know, or people that just sit online and think they know everything as well. So it's kind of like mm. some people online are just, you know, it's just, um, they just don't know much, but they think they do. Yeah, well, you see, that's so when I go into something, I go into it with the mindset that I don't know everything. And yeah, even when, open. I, when I find out what, what I'm looking for mm. that that might be a biased search as well i'm a scientist at heart so you know what they say um when you form a hypothesis then you should you know work it out and stuff um but look at all the results even if the results um disprove your original hypothesis right? yeah most people oh, most people nowadays they don't seem to really work that out mm. they just try and prove their theory and disregard um, all the facts that might disprove it yeah and I'm just like look if I'm wrong I'm wrong and that's okay you know as long as whatever the truth is comes out yeah because what benefit is it to me if I'm right but I'm right based on false facts yeah do you think Nelson Mandela type of person would ever come in South Africa again or someone would like his type of personality or inspiration I, I think it's not so much a personality inspiration thing it's just we just need someone who understands that running a country doesn't mean representing your party running a yeah. country means representing the people. the people of the country yeah. it just so happens that maybe you were part of a party when this happened, which is why I'm going to run in the upcoming elections. You are? For the national and provincial, yeah, as an independent. First time? Um, yeah, but it's also the first time that independents have been recognized to run. 
the Constitution states that any person, which means an individual too, can run, <laughs> say for president. Wow. However, it's just been practiced as um, individual, uh, not individual, as parties uh, who run in the elections. Wow. And then uh, civil society took them to, or took, I say them, I'm like, I don't even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but took them to court, the constitutional court, and then they ruled that um, independents can also run and the current government, like thank you, um, that, yeah. You like it? Yes, I love it, but I'm actually hungry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Auntie Aisha is not back yet. She's not back. Yeah, she went to the doctor, but she'll be back soon. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Auntie Aisha is also. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah. she she is the one who we're doing this for. Okay. And was asked for by her brother, Uncle Vicky. Oh. Yes. Um. Back to the elections. Yes. So um, they ruled that individuals should also have the opportunity to uh, run in the, in the elections uh, for both local municipalities as well as national and provincial. Mm -hmm. And the current government has to um, create legislation around that. And they kind of left it till last. We won't speculate as to why, but yeah. um, based off the legislation they came up with, we took them to court again um, regarding the fairness of the requirements. At first, the requirements were uh, about, say, 13,500 signatures for independents to collect in order to, to support their application, yeah. uh, plus a 20,000 rand application fee. And then once you've registered to, to run, you need to get, I think it's like 87,000 votes, give or take, I don't know, wow. um, in city. to get a seat on, wow. in parliament. However, a party member has to get, say, the equivalent, like half of that, yeah. like maybe 45,000 wow. or something like, like that. But in in order independent is hard. Twice as much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, they took him to court. The court ruled like, OK, cool, let's um, relook at this. Uh, you only need a thousand signatures to um, to apply. Yeah. Still twenty thousand application fee. Okay, but I think I didn't look at the full document, but I think the amount of uh, votes needed is still like twice as much as uh, a party member. Mm. So I'm like, well, whatever. We'll just try, and then should myself or anyone else manage to get a seat, the next step then is once. Uh, the seats of parliament have been organized and whatever um, they then uh, nominate people to be president and then they as the parliament will vote on who, who, who will be president I guess and that's where I come in <laughs> where once I have my seat Inshallah. Um, I am hoping thank you God <laughs> willing, um, then hopefully the the room will vote for me and then try their luck you know? so you're saying to me when is the elections like two th this year yeah this year 2020 possibly april they'll only decide the exact date once registration for voters is closed which is why i'm also like even that the isc has really dropped the ball not even dropped the ball they haven't picked the, the ball up <laughs> <laughs> um it's a but corrupt political system here. So corruption is also relative. It's, it's like, normal. <laughs> it's, if anything, I'm really proud of the way the way in which uh, we run our elections. We still mm. do paper votes. Oh. Every single ballot is counted wow. and recounted if a recount is asked. No and we have our um, uh, party representatives or independent representatives who can watch. Uh, be present at the voting stations to make sure it's run free and fairly and there's no um, sus Funny business. action yeah. happening. Um, and once that's been done, they can be present while it's being counted to make sure again that everything's above board. Um, yeah, and, and if there's any discrepancies or challenges uh, regarding like that's happening while they come like oh no no that one doesn't look like it's for them you can see clearly they were marked yeah, 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 for yeah. us so double check that so then that's then placed in a, another envelope as in like say wow. uh, someone questioned this they make a note of yeah. it that party member makes a note everyone makes a note <laughs> so many notes um, and even after that again if 
I get my results once everything's counted and I'm looking and I'm like, mm, no, I know for a fact that at this district, um, I know there were this many who said they were going to, and there's like half of that here. Yeah. So I can request a recount of that station specifically. And they will. And it's like, it's, it's a full process. And even if it takes a month or two, it'll be sorted. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm really proud of that. But where I say they are lacking is yeah. the voter education, uh -huh. which is one of their main mandates, the, uh, I, the Independent Electoral Commission, the yeah. IEC. And like this year, we have three votes. We have our provincial vote, our national vote, and say a party vote. Yeah. Now, if you ask people, do they know this? I don't know. Wow. You know, maybe a handful knows, but the rest are just going to get to the ballot box and be like, huh, got all this paper. Oh, now yeah. What? You know? Because that happened in our municipal election. Yeah. I did hear it's going to be windy out here. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah. Well, yeah, in our municipal election, um, I believe I had two votes. Yes. Yeah. And you could then vote uh, for an independent, well, basically an individual, yeah. whether that individual is part of a party or an independent. And then you could vote for your party as a party vote, which would be, let's say, the party that um, the mayor would be selected from or whatever. Yeah. Or the premier or whatever the proper words is um, and people didn't really understand that mm -hmm. so they quite say voted for their party twice yeah. and I'm like you could have voted for an individual to represent you in your ward yeah. and then you can still go and support your name brand whoever that brand may be um, in the overall party board. Yeah. but you know who your individual councillor is because yep. right now they just voted on brands. They saw your your favorite brand and they're like, okay, we're going with this one. Okay. But they didn't know who the actual individual person was. No. Believe me, I know in my ward, that guy for the Democratic Alliance, he didn't show up to one pub public meeting, wow. one public uh, debate, <laughs> nothing. They still voted for him. Wow. Because he knew that he could ride the curtails of his party's uh, brand. Money helps in these situations get places. Yes, I don't know. It's more just it's it, it can't, it can't hurt to get your name out there. Yeah. But there are so many other ways to do this. I literally, I I ran everything with myself and like two, three, four volunteers. Uh, my mom, we I helped her put her posters up. She helped me put my posters up. She ran as the ward counselor oh, for wow. this school club and yeah, yeah. It's around, and I ran for the neighboring ward. Um, so she was 77, I was Ward 57. So that was really sweet as well. Um, that we could have that moment where we just like, we were both on the ballot. Wow. Of our respective wards. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we just helped each other out. You know? So in 2024, you're telling me you could be the next president of South Africa? Yeah. Damn. I, mean, I don't actually know if that's exactly the legislation terms, but that's the goal. <laughs> Wow. Um, You're we'll nervous. See. I guess. Yes That's and no. That's a big responsibility. Yes and no. The thing is like, the until experience. you've been a president, no one's been the president. Every single president that's been president, until their been, second term, yeah. they've never been president. They have no prior experience. And being president of the company is not experience. Wow. Okay? So, um... Yeah, and I'm not planning to run for a second term. I refuse. Oh. Yeah, because... Is it four I, years? I, Every four years? Yeah, four or five years, something like that. But um, I, I really can't stand when uh, politicians or presidents say like, Hold oh, the spotlight. you know, we're not going to really rock the boat this yeah. term because we're going to uh, save it for our second term. Because, you uh. know, after the second term, we can't have a third term or whatever yeah. the nonsense is. And I'm like, nah. Like, I'm going to do, do what I need to do to get things done. And if the people, while I'm doing my stuff, were like, you know what, we changed our mind. We don't want you for president. Guys, can we just impeach uh. this woman? <laughs> you know, she's too much. She's just too much for us. Then I'll be like, you know what? The Being a woman, is it harder running for president in this country? Or is it? I, in all honesty, I, I don't know. Because just as, an indiv as a person, I don't really think in those terms. Again, I'd have to thank my mom, even my dad, 
because every time I came to them with some wild idea, like, mm-hmm. I'm gonna play soccer, I'm gonna skateboard, I'm just whatever, they just said, okay. Like they didn't say, oh, that's normally a girl thing or a boy thing or a this thing or that thing. They just were like, okay, cool. uh, what do you need from us? <laughs> You know. You're gonna paint the uh, building that you're staying in with Palestine flags. I wish, but I'm renting. <laughs> no, I'm though. saying the president. If oh, you ever one. get to that, if uh, you ever get to that stage. Yeah, that would be cool. That, that would be, be cool, cool, right? Yeah. You would like that would be like groundbreaking stuff. Yeah. Although one of the things I do want to try is, um, so I want to try basic training, like with the military. Wow. Yeah, because I just yeah, you know, if you're going to. Technically, as president, you're the general of the army. Yeah. So I'm like, then I might as well go through the same training as them, you know? Mm. Why not? Yeah. I'm not no. sure if that's allowed, though. I was, I was running this through with my mom. I was like, would, like, my whoever superior well, person who's training me be able to command me to do stuff? Yeah. If I'm, like, president? It's a lot. You probably end up missing little things about life, like your neighborhood streets, walking around, no security. It's a I'm whole different life. It. Like, like I, used, I was, I was imagining this in my mind and telling him, I'm like, you know, I'm not sure if I'll be allowed to mm. do like chilling. Walking yeah, yeah, around, yeah, chilling, walking but around. I'm gonna try because <laughs> I can't think of anything better than literally just still being a yeah, random person, a regular on the person street. on the street. I'll just tell my security, like, you guys may be super incognito. I want to kill my vibe. <laughs> oh, man. Because I think the community would miss someone like you because you're a pillar of this community, Boo Cap, from what I see. From the, you know, like the, um, it power, like you empower this place just by your artwork and your, I'm sure your friends and stuff must really admire you, you know. Having someone like you as a friend must be really, really, really good to have. I guess, well, I, I can't say that my friends and I don't have a mutual respect for each other and admiration. Um, but also, like, empower, I don't think of it that way. Empowering in general, because that implies that maybe you didn't have power to begin with. Mm. It's more, when I live my life, I try to also embody that, um, what they say in the Bible, that, you know, you... Um, not just walk the walk, talk the talk, but... Yeah. You eat. Action speaks louder than words, right? Yeah, you just, you, you live, um, hold on to your hat. Hold on to everything. It's yeah. windy as hell, I think. So you do empower your Christian values into, yeah, basically which is to, important. Yeah, basically to live my life, mm. um, as, um, a, a, a Christian should and the funny thing is it's only recently that I've embraced the side of me because I've been exploring um, and I've open to other religions faiths, yeah. and faiths and practices um, and I, I started realizing up until like last year that the way in which I practice my spirituality re- uh, relates more to Christianity yeah. and I was not against uh, practicing Islam or Judaism or Hinduism yeah, or yeah, Hinduism. Yeah. I was yeah. just like it just needs to um, complement the way in which my I practice mm-hmm. my spirit spirituality and Christianity did yeah. so yeah and then that doesn't mean I'm not still in admiration of other people no. and how they practice their spirituality because that doesn't negatively impact me and how I practice mine yeah. you know and historically, Christian, Islam, and Judaism, they trace back to similar time frames in sense of... And the beliefs, the core belief, usually is uh, mm. most of the things are relatively similar in yeah, some and ways. it's the same. It's like, we all want to um, share love and in love yeah. and be love. We all want to be forgiven mm. <laughs> for the things that we cannot speak about, we don't want to speak about, yeah. we do speak about, but um, might not be the best things, you know? Yeah. I'm no saint. No, no. By far. <laughs> um, and I go out of my way to make sure people know, like, I'm very much just like everybody else. I just keep trying. And there are times where I've had some really low points and I didn't want to keep trying anymore, but then I just kept trying. 
I'm very stubborn like that. Wow. Um, and I just want people to have a chance to keep trying to. You yeah. Know? And if I have to be president or um, something else, whatever it is that my people, my community, my family, I need, then, or God needs me to be, I will be that. Because that, that's just the way it is. And I wish we could just want to be what we need to be in order to achieve the goal we all want. Yeah. Which is, you know, love. And peace. And, yeah. Peace, peace can be relative though. Mm. I, I kind of would like to say like... Um, there will never be peace understanding, forever. Yeah. Com- Tolerance. Like comprehensive understanding mm. of, of each other's, say, Beliefs. suffering and, yeah. and or happiness. Because if you have that understanding, yeah. then peace can be achieved because then you're going out of your way to kind of hurt somebody otherwise. Yeah. You know, because you understand where another person's pain and suffering is coming from. You are, I feel like you are less likely to um, impose any other pain or suffering on them because mm-hmm. you're like, damn, they're going through a lot right now. I really don't want to add to their pain. You know? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I wish I could help them either. Like, those are the kind of thoughts that goes through your mind when you begin to understand where someone's coming from. Yeah. And, and hopefully you have the um, emotional, like, intelligence to not feel like it's somehow um, your fault. Because a lot of times people will be like, oh, well, I didn't mean to hurt you. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's not my fault you're hurting like that. I'm like, dude, dude, just acknowledge that this person is hurting and then let's see what we can do about it <laughs> yeah you know and if you can't do anything about it that's okay too just be like you know what i'm sorry you're feeling this way i wish there's something i could do to help but i'm not going to you know add to your plates at the very no. least three things you like about south africa <laughs> food oh food's I awesome love food. oh, so much. but you're so slim though yeah because you're I one of those like, types oh, that <laughs> Ah, my feet. <laughs> you probably your metabolism's probably like Maybe. some people are like that. I know some people that just eat forever and don't put on weight. Yeah. Um. So yes, food. Mm, people, as in like, just the way. We some of them could be miserable as hell. I've noticed that some South Africans are so miserable. Yeah, but it, uh, remind me of British people. <laughs> Well, we, we, we were calling her. Yeah. Like, we adopted a few things, <laughs> including tea time. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we do not mess around about tea time. Yeah. yeah so. Maybe it's just the way, it's like Americans, they're quite direct. And because cause England's so tiptoey when they speak. Yeah, we're very polite. Yeah. So you might think it's rude, but yeah. it's not. It's just the way South Africans speak. Oh, yes. Snap. Oh, hi. So, second thing was food, right? No, oh, first no, thing first was thing was food. Second, second thing was people, people to an extent, you mean? Not even an extent. <laughs> like, I just love the way we are. Yeah. From the, from the big things, the small things. It's mm-hmm. just like, you know, um, we're, we're Tiamakai in a beautiful way. Yeah. Tiamakai is like um, messy, but beautifully, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, very rugged. Yeah, it's and not the rugged, but it's also like, it's, it's, it's just... We're, we're just beautiful and I love the way we we engage even mm-hmm. when it's like really bad I'm just like and then and then how we try and cr- make things better it's just like we just keep trying we don't stop <laughs> yeah you don't give up it's you know? strong resilience um, for the good and the bad uh-huh. like people just trying to push maybe their rhetoric or their agendas and I'm just like wow guys I like think if that you're tired of this, like really. The third thing I'm gonna guess you might be the weather or the beaches might be the third thing you like. Yeah, the third thing um, I'd have to say is mm, my mom. Uh. <laughs> well, sorry, I know it's like, so corny, but like everything, like she, 
whenever I see her living her life and then what I'm able to do with my life mm -hmm. I just can't help but like look at her and be like wow you know I want to be like I want to wow. continue to to enjoy this life yeah. the way she's doing it and continue to do the best that I can even when I mess up you know and I'm not saying like my mom and I are the, the east west best friends all the time yeah however we, we keep trying and I see and I admire that so much because my mom is like whatever age she is and not that we have a thing about ages but I don't know no no of course age. not um and she's still trying she's still doing stuff and she's wow. still encouraging us like to do things and That's amazing. so even though i'm 29 i'm like i'm not freaked out about turning 30 i'm not freaked out that i have kids or don't have kids i do want kids I'm just... but i'm not freaking out about it yeah. i'm just like it'll it'll happen, it'll happen. If it god wills happen, god willing it's yes. in god's hands man and your whole destiny she, she has literally lived the example um that when you baptize someone and then you, the, the parents and guardians make this promise that they will continue to live and embody the ideals and the uh, ways of, you know, God and the Bible and scripture and all of this stuff. Yeah. She did that without saying it was because God said. She just did. Did it, naturally. And then I, my brothers and I, we just became these people who did these things and now understanding um, scripture and uh, pursuing... Um, Christianity mm -hmm. myself consciously I recognize it so much and I cannot thank her enough for just not like telling us no you need to be Christian this is the yeah, way yeah. you must be Christian and I'm like now I just know that the way that I always have been has been Christian whether you I realized it or not subconsciously yeah uh, because no, she led by example without okay. being like okay yeah, yeah, today's yeah, yeah, lesson yeah, yeah. on Christianity yeah. sometimes it's too <laughs> much for some kids yeah, because kids, yeah, yeah. even adults, like we rebel against, rebel these, against things these things yeah. because we feel like we're not, Shut down we're not your able throat. to make this choice ourselves. Yeah. That's why I'm going to make a it's a conscious decision. And whenever I do something, I do it like full participation all day. Yeah. Or I won't waste my time. And it's not just me. I feel like a lot of my peers, uh, the millennials, the gen. Oh, the Aziz, I think, all the alphas. It's too many. Know, <laughs> I think we all have that same feeling across yeah. the globe. We're like, we are very apathetic. Yeah. But, as in, like, in our actions, but in our heads, maybe we're like fighting. But we're not going to jump in unless we're all in. Because mm. when we do something, it'll be done. For every person out there that's like, where is the youth? Where is the youth? I'm like, enough of that. Yeah. That's we are cool. more than our age. Yeah. And when we do step up, we don't back down, mm. which is why also the Palestinian cause is so important because it gives us a, a physical form to actually uh, say stand against yep. and or, or people to stand for. Whereas a lot of, especially South African millennials or youth or whatever, yeah. <laughs> Our our battle has been a lot more abstract, a lot more yeah, subtle, yeah. because we don't have an apartheid government to say you're doing this, you're doing that. Yeah. The the democratic alliance has helped a lot in like having some things, but they're very subtle in other things. Mm -hmm. So we really have to dig deep. We really have to pull back the curtain to find those lines that connect to how we are still currently being oppressed. Yep. Um, but once we do, like I said, we're all in. We're gonna march. We're going to fight, and wow. we're not going to back down. Yeah. It was this guy. What he said. He said to me. He goes, um, "We. He's not stopping until something changes." And I believed. You yes. Know, at the protest the other day. Yeah. One who's holding the banner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. said he's been doing it since a young kid, and yeah. he's in his fifties. Yeah. My my it's friend, um, Kadira. She's in. I think it's Japan now. Literally, we had at Alexander Sinton High, yeah. which is just over the mountain, um, a Palestinian, like, I wouldn't say club, but like, say work group. I don't know, yeah. thing. And I didn't know as much as I know now at the, as I did then. Um, because I was also the same mistake in that it's a Muslim cause within this. So oh, you yeah, can yeah, see yeah. also how Yours did, over yeah, the years yeah. you can you can learn yeah <laughs> and she was a part of that and we were in high school at the same time you know so this has begun and continues to be part of our lives um post apartheid um and now even during like alexander
Donda Simpson just recently did a new uh, a mural with yeah. the South African flag, like puzzle piece together with the Palestinian flag, okay. and the quote from Nelson Mandela saying, "Our freedom is incomplete without um, uh, freedom of Palestine." Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. What time are you finish in here? So Look I'm just that. working on um, uh, what's it? Outlining uh, some things to clean it up, mm. and then tomorrow, hopefully, when the wind dies down, I'm going to get up to the top and do that too. Okay. Um, yeah, we're still gonna have Uncle Fiki here on the stoop. Yeah. He'll be calling in to Aisha <laughs> and be like, "Oh, the letter is arrived. I'll put on some tea." Oh man. And then one of the kids will be running towards the house with the letter. Um, and then tomorrow, one of the Arabic um, English language students, he's coming to write the letter in Arabic. It has never been vandalized. Well, it it's won't. Been here a week. A week. Do some of them get vandalized? Probably in yeah. some parts of the city. No. Yeah. Look at that. That's amazing. The beautiful thing about these murals being in Bukhab is that um, it's probably the one place in the entire world where it will be protected. Mm -hmm. Just like with the largest mural in the world for Palestine, yeah. Back, again, um, the likelihood of it being taken down is slim to none. Wow. It's very much the whole community Damn. is. Even if you say there's maybe a handful who isn't. Yeah. Again, it's, they won't touch it. They know not. Yeah. And even the DA knows because um, the city. Um, said that council houses aren't yeah. allowed to be painted on without permits or written permission uh -huh. being granted and um, this statement was issued after we had already, well we, uh, the murals for Gaza had done a, a painting somewhere there. Yeah. And if they, uh, and uh, other than in the flats where they did the same thing, mm -hmm. exact same thing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They did the exact same thing, painted a flag on a council house. Yeah. And immediately, within, I don't even know, less than a day or whatever, uh, the city sent in the police to paint over it. Uh, but they didn't do that here. Uh, I'm just saying. It's like, amazing. Because you just, you just don't want to. Um, oh, he try wants it. to. Um, Yeah. There are That's times amazing. where you should fuck around and find out, and there are times when you just shouldn't. No, yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. But yeah, we're gonna yeah. end it off here. Get and I still need to write over there letters from the letters to South Africa from a free Palestine. Wow. Yeah. And we'll add a few more people as well. Oh man. I'm gonna get some pictures of this and then I'm gonna yes. shoot off. Thank you for your time. Thank You've you. been amazing. And free Palestine <laughs> from now to forever. <laughs>